All right, everybody. Today, I'm going to talk a bit about how to properly bootstrap your Ionic and mobile first application. So, one thing you may run into when working with Ionic under Cordova is that there is a Cordova event device ready that you have to wait for before you do anything special. So, use a device API, use contacts, camera, etc. But Ionic will launch and run and show you a view possibly before that event has fired. Now the timing there is really really tight and probably you don't have to worry about it but it's a good idea to be super sure before you use anything that device ready has fired. So under mobile first we have a similar situation. Now we don't have to listen for device ready. Uh, instead, we have to listen for the mobile first init function, but we still have that concern. So I wanna make sure that before you see this screen that it is safe to start doing device stuff, no matter what that may be. So there's a couple of different ways of addressing this and let's look at a few examples. Uh, the code that I'm starting with is the same code that I used in the first video. It's the blank Ionic template and I've updated it to work under the mobile first environment. So I've already gone through all that work. Uh, you could see it running on screen here. And with that, let's take a look. So as a reminder, WL init .js is the file I created just for my mobile first stuff. Now we have a function, WL common init, that's fired automatically when the mobile first environment is you know, ready to work. Now what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to manually bootstrap Angular instead of having Angular do it itself. I'm going to go back to my index.html, I'm going to remo uh, remove the ng app, save that, and just copy some code that I've already written and paste it in. So this is you know, fairly typical boilerplate code for how you can bootstrap Angular outside of using ng-app. Uh, but now I put it within WL common init, which just to remind you, will also fire after Cordova's device ready event. So I know that's run as well. So I save this and just to be sure, I'll add a quick console.log ready to go like so alright so we will do a B D and all that and I'm gonna show you how this looks both in the mobile browser simulator the web thing I was just showing you um, and in Xcode with the iPhone simulator alright so it's built and it has deployed and it will refresh and boom so Obviously, it's going to look the exact same, but technically behind the scenes, uh, the Ionic slash Angular part was a bit delayed while it was waiting for the mobile first stuff to start. All right, so that's kind of phase one. Now, when you work with mobile first, you don't actually automatically connect to the mobile first server. Uh, that's because for whatever reason, you may not need to. So what we want to do is actually connect to the mobile first server and delay my bootstrapping until that is ready as well. So I'm gonna copy some more code, like so, and just pretend you don't see the line that I'm erasing. All right, so this is how you connect to the mobile first server. It's the wl.client.connect call and it has a success and a failure. And all I've done is you know, move my bootstrap stuff into the on success. So I'm gonna save it and I'm going to do a rebuild. And what we're gonna see now is how this looks. And I'm gonna test it both in the uh, mobile browser simulator and uh, the iPhone simulator because things are gonna be a bit different here. All right, so it's built, it's deployed, and let's do a refresh. Now, I don't know if you saw that, but there was a flash of unstyled content there. Let's do it again. It's very, very quick, but users will definitely see stuff like that. Let's try running this in the mobile, in the uh, emulator, and 
we see the same thing there as well. So that sucks, right? So what we can do is we can actually do a little trick. We can tell mobile first that, you know what? Don't automatically hide the splash screen, okay? And I want you to wait until everything is ready, my wl.connect, and at that point, I want you to hide the splash screen. So basically, we're gonna have that splash screen up there a little bit longer, and we're gonna hide it manually. Now, I'm going to do a build and deploy on this, and we'll see what happens. All right, and there's the build, and let me see you deploy right about now, sweet. All right, so let's refresh here and see what happens. Now, you still see that flash. Now, when I saw that, I thought, well, okay, my workaround's not working. But then I remembered there's no splash screen when you're using the desktop browser version. So if we go back to Xcode, stop and run, we should now see there's the splash screen, and when it goes away, we have a perfect system.